That's correct. Newton's third law states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. How does that law apply to a helicopter? When the rotor blades turn, they cause the helicopter to also want to turn. The rotor blades want to stop turning. The engine power must be increased, or power must be increased to the tail rotor. Select the right answer. That's right. According to Newton's third law, the blades are trying to turn the helicopter in the opposite direction that they are turning. This is called torque. While on the ground, this problem is minimized because of the friction of the landing skids. So while on the ground, the body won't turn around the blades unless lots of power is quickly transferred to the rotor system, or the helicopter is on ice or floating on water. In most conventional helicopters, a tail rotor is used to compensate for the torque applied to the main rotor. The tail rotor is installed on a long lever, the tail section, and provides sideward thrust, which resists the turning of the helicopter. To control the tail rotor, we use the anti-torque pedals. These pedals change the amount of thrust generated by the tail rotor by increasing or decreasing the pitch, causing the tail of the helicopter to rotate right or left. Whenever the tail moves, the nose will turn in the opposite direction. Using the anti-torque pedals, the heading of the helicopter can be controlled. Stepping on the right pedal rotates the nose to the right. Stepping on the left pedal turns the helicopter to the left. OK, back to hovering and moving through the air. Controlling the magnitude of total rotor thrust is accomplished with the collective pitch control. This control is the same one that has the throttle mounted on it. By lifting up the collective, we increase the blade's angle of attack, causing a greater total rotor thrust. Remember we said earlier, the helicopter's rotor blades are designed to spin at a fairly constant speed. When the collective is pulled up, what else must be done to maintain the proper RPM of the blades? Add more pedal, decrease the throttle, increase the throttle, or lower the collective. Exactly. When total rotor thrust is increased by lifting the collective, more power is required to maintain a constant RPM, which in turn requires an increase in throttle. As the total rotor thrust increases, we increase lift until it is greater than the weight of the helicopter and it starts moving up. The opposite is also true. If total rotor thrust is decreased by lowering the collective, less power is required and the throttle must be decreased. The throttle must be coordinated with the changes in collective. In some helicopters, the collective and throttle are mechanically correlated and only require fine-tuning by the pilot. All turbine and some piston helicopters have governors that precisely control the engine RPM. Now is when the cyclic control comes into play. When moving the cyclic control, the total rotor thrust will also move. For example, Pushing the cyclic slightly forward causes the total rotor thrust to tilt forward. This will reduce the lift component and create a thrust component. Since the helicopter now has thrust, it will begin to move forward. It will continue to accelerate until the air resistance causes enough drag to equal the thrust and then will stay at that speed. By tilting the total rotor thrust in any direction, we can move in any direction. But keep in mind that the directional thrust associated with the moving of the cyclic causes the lift component to be reduced. What action should be taken to maintain altitude? Add throttle. Raise the collective and add throttle. Lower the collective and add throttle. Lower the collective and reduce throttle. Or hold the same collective and throttle. Sure. Raising the collective and adding throttle would increase the total rotor thrust and maintain or even increase altitude and speed. To get the helicopter back on the ground, we need to move the cyclic back enough to slow down and stop. Then lower the collective and reduce the throttle to settle onto the ground. The ability of the helicopter to land in limited spaces also gives it a unique safety benefit. How do you think this is possible? Auto rotation. Gravity. Potential energy or kinetic energy? Select the right answer.
Exactly. The blades must continue to rotate. This is called autorotation. In the case of engine failure, a freewheeling unit allows the blades to continue spinning even though the engine is no longer providing power. A pilot in this situation is able to adjust the controls in such a way that the blades continue to rotate and the helicopter can glide back to the ground and land safely with minimum forward speed. The auto rotation maneuver is an essential part of pilot training and pilots continue to practice this emergency flight procedure regularly. Now, let's go fly. An important thing to watch is how the pilot controls the helicopter. You'll notice that the controls are moved very smoothly and gently. Just like driving a car, a helicopter is very responsive, so abrupt control movements are not required and should be avoided. There you have it, that's how a helicopter flies.